morning. Good morning. I am. We're beginning to fire everything up here. We're getting all of our technology fired up. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, YouTube's looking great. Hello, YouTube. Hello, Facebook. Hi, Diane. We're missing you today. We were just talking about you. Your girlfriends down here were talking about you, Carol and Brenda. <laughs> uh, hi, Carol. Hi, Alexa. Alexa. Alexa, that's such a pretty name. Hi, Tim. Tim, Tim, I want to celebrate Tim today. I, I put it on Facebook last night, but not everybody see that TFH chat page. Uh, Tim, I want to just congratulate you. Tim invited his friend Harold to come to church. He was here for the very first time on Sunday. Harold is 51 years old. And at the close of the service, Harold gave his life to Jesus for the first time. Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection oh, Day at 51. Tim, that is your win, brother. I am so proud of you. And, you know, is there any greater joy than to be that person? You know, Kathy Faye. Kathy Faye brought her neighbor mm -hmm. and her so sweet much. neighbor, Debbie, who's yeah. been through so much, uh, accepted Jesus and came up at the end of the second service. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So we had so many salvations. I know wherever you live, uh, we're here gathering at the, in Burnsville, Minnesota. But wherever you live, I'm sure you went to church this weekend and just had a great celebration Sunday. You know, Easter is just it's Resurrection Day is the is the Super Bowl for Christians, right? <laughs> right. And uh, so we had so many salvations. And let's see, we had nine, eight or nine, Sue, eight, eight, nine salvations on Sunday. We had 18 water baptisms, 21. Oh, really? Uh, Was I off on my count? No, there was nine at Council of the Parish, and then 12 for us. Oh, 21 water baptisms. Wow, wow 21 water baptisms. I got to change that stat because I reported a lower stat. 21 mm -hmm. water baptisms. I'd always wanted you guys to do water baptism on Easter Sunday. Oh, it had always been yeah. in my heart, but I, I really... Oh. I just could never make it happen for whatever reason. But this year, early on, I went, okay, we're not doing anything. You know, we're going to have a, we've had a big choir number. It was so beautiful oh, with our freedom to yeah, dance, worship so dancers. Oh, it was glorious. And, and Carol, yeah, thank you. Really thank you for your leadership in the choir. Biggest choir we've ever had. Oh, it's so beautiful. Too. Wasn't it beautiful? And, and just more voices. And I know. Oh. I wish I could have just been out there watching, but it was such such a glorious day. But Tim, God bless you. Thank you for that. Carol, thank you for everything you do to love our choir and to build our choir and to grow our choir. We're going to have a study today that's a little different. Hi, Madison. Good morning on YouTube. You're my faithful YouTuber. And look, at I got elephants on both sides today. I got an elephant over there. So you got an elephant over there, and I got an elephant over there. I can't quite, yeah, I can't quite get it. I'm flanked. I flanked with elephants is my desire, right? Anybody with me? Come on. High fives and hallelujahs. I thank God for the elephants in my life. Hi, Jim. Are you watching from around the pool in Arizona? I'll bet you are. You little stinker, you, you love water in the pool about as much as I do. I, you know, you know what my dream, I am not, everybody's got their thing, right? Yeah. Everybody's got their thing. And I love the family of God because everybody loves different stuff. Yeah. My perfect vacation is, oh, wait a second. Stop. I Late news here. Okay, Tim, that is so cool of you. Tim is saying, while Tim invited him, Daryl Heinen, who got baptized, mm, yeah. mm -hmm. is the one who got Harold a lift Oh. To get here. Oh, Praise the Lord. Oh, wow. Good job. We're, we're talking yeah. about two elephants. There you go. Yeah, Perfect good. example. Yeah, you good. work together to get him here, and, yeah. and he got he got transformed on Sunday. Oh, right. thank you for telling me that. I'm going to celebrate that with Daryl, too. What a, what a glorious day. And we had uh, record attendance. We had, through yes. with the five services, there were 510 people wow. yeah. that yeah. were here at the Father's House. Glorious weekend. I'm sure you yeah. had the same at your church, too. Now, I was talking about something much less spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> My preference on vacation. <laughs> Some people are like, get me to a beach. I want the beach. I want the beach. I want the beach. No. Londa mm -hmm. Ramsey wants to be at a pool overlooking the beach. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's my dream. I, like I mean, when I say dream, like when I think of vacation in sun, I want to be sitting by the pool looking at the ocean. Mm -hmm. 
that's my deal because yeah. I'm not really a get the well no oh, sand, the, the sand in, in, in all my water. orifices <laughs> and the, yeah. yeah and then you gotta sh- you know and yeah and it's, and it's in all my cool. stuff yeah. I think it's that it gets in your yeah. purse or your yeah. carry on your it's book or your, or your phone or your water or whatever you have yeah. I'm sort of a tidy person so I, I like mm-hmm. to keep the sand away from where I am anyway I love you uh I love you Jim and I'm so glad you and Kim are, are having a nice time out there Grant okay. says, here we go. Yes. Hi, honey. Huh? Yeah, my friend says she'd rather have sand than chlorine. Uh, honey, I love you. I was leaving early the bedroom this morning, and and I'm just about ready to close the door, and Brent sits up and he goes, I love you, honey. He, like, yells, and I'm like, I love you, too. Aww. You know, we never know. I'm not to be morbid, but it's just a fact. I really encourage you, if you don't do this, every time you hang up the phone, you know, Every time you leave the house, every time you leave the presence of who you're with that you love, tell them you love them. Amen. What if something happened? You know, you want your family to know the last words they heard from you were "I love you," right? Amen. Right. right? Yeah. And it's just—it's really important to to say the words. A lot of people have trouble saying the words. Especially well, get over yourself. Mm-hmm. You do. Come sit. Come sit over here. Tell me. Or come sit over here so I can <coughs> turn this. My friend Sue has a testimony about that. I want her to share that. So talk to my friends here. My friend, yeah. uh, she was an eighth grader. Her and I were eighth graders at the time. The night prior, the only thing she, the last thing she remembered is her parents hugging her and saying, I love you before they left for the night for their anniversary. They were hit by a drunk driver and both killed. Oh. So that is what she has as their last words of her parents saying, That's I love you. That's so it. I made it for the rest of my life that I was always going to hug my sure. kids yep. every cool. time if they were going out for there school you go. or whatever. Mm. So we've made it a habit that we hug same, and say, I love you. Of a testimony you do? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. With when your mother, your mother, the last word she said? Yeah. Oh. I think we all have a story like that. I I just said, I love you, Mama. Oh. And she looked around the room. There were a few of us there. I don't know if you were there. She said, I love you, too. Then she said, I love all of you. And she died that night before I could even get back to the hospital. Mm. So important. Hey, guys. Thank thank you for that. Hi, Gerhard. I love you, sweetie. I love you. Um, I'm going to go on and share on my other pages. If you feel so inclined, would you please share? On your page, I've got a couple other pages that I manage. So I'm going to do that right now. There comes my liquid love through the door. (laughs) There it is. I wait for this moment every morning like I'm looking around. There's an accident up there, so it took me forever to get here. But there you go. I'm like a, I'm like a little, like a little doggy at the window. (laughs) You know, I've got grand dogs now, right? Y'all know that? And so I'm, I'm, I'm really becoming accustomed with the behavior of dogs. (laughs) And while I've had to... I I mean, these are well-trained, amazing dogs. They're so beautiful. So to all you dog lovers out there, I'm sort of becoming a dog lover because oh. of, because of, um, <laughs> we're all just kind of getting started here, guys. Hang on a second. Um, but these dogs, they're, they're both so smart. There's a boy and a girl. So Captain is the boy, Scout is the girl. And they are beautiful. They are super well. I mean, Brent always told me, because Brent would go see Christian and Cherith when they lived in Tulsa. And Brent loves dogs, but he's like, honey, these are Christian dogs. They are saved. They are sanctified. And they are Christians. They are not rebellious. They are, they obey. They are great dogs. And I'm, I'm serious. I think that Christian and Cherith are like dog whispers. They talk to them. Like, I'm not, now listen oh, yeah. to me. Listen yeah. to me. They said, and I watched it with my own eyes. Captain, go get a drink of water. And Captain went and got a drink of water. Mm. No joke. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, wow. If they can do that with dogs, imagine how well behaved their mm. children are going to be. <laughs> okay, what is my point? I, I was looking at you like the dogs are at the window because every car that drives by, they think it's Christian and Cherith and they go to the window and they watch. So I'm out here watching for, for my friend Lisa's car to come because she's going she's gonna to bring me some, some liquid love. All right, guys, today we're going to have a study that's different off of Proverbs. I think you got that from your notes. Do you all have your notes? I hope you have your study notes. Your study notes are important for you to write, make your own notes that becomes a spiritual journal for you. 
um, if you don't, if you're not getting study notes, my producer Liz would love to send them to you every Tuesday morning. I've made my own book from a, a dollar store binder. And then you just print out the notes every Tuesday morning. She'll send them to you if you put your email in the comments here. Or if you're not comfortable doing that, you can DM me or DM Liz put Dabs. Put a link in there. Yeah, put a link in there. If, if, if uh, She'll put a link in what to fill out. But we'd love to send you these study notes so that you can teach. Maybe the Lord would have you lead a small group mm -hmm. or a study on Proverbs. You could take my notes and lead your own study. That would be awesome. So um, get your notes. That would be great. Now, today, I want you to turn in your Bible to James 4. Um we had four services on Easter Sunday here at the Father's house. We had two in the morning at Casa de Padre had theirs at two o'clock in the afternoon. And then we came back at, at, at six o'clock at night and Pastor Scott preached. Mm -hmm. Pastor Scott and Brenda are who we're in relationship with. We're all on a team here at the Father's house. And he mm -hmm. preached a wonderful message um, that the, the text was, was simply verse eight, but I'm going to read to you for a minute verses seven through 10, because I really, it really it impacted me. I knew God was going to do something wonderful in me that night. You know, you just come to church. If you come to church expecting something's good's going to happen, guess what? Something, good. something good's going to happen. Like every time you go to your church or you go to your small group, you should come expecting something great to happen. But I was really, you know, when you give out, give out, give out, right? Yeah. Uh, Brenda's an amazing worship leader. She's right here by yeah. me, Pastor Brenda. And so she carried the majority of the worship. But I knew that I'm going to get to sit down now. This is going to be kind of my church service. Yeah. I get to just sit cool. back and receive. And Scott yeah. preached. Yeah. And uh, uh, and there were just several wonderful things. Can I tell you one? Of, this isn't my study yet. I'm, this is all the pre-study. Okay. <laughs> He said something I've never heard said before that was really cool. I've been I've been meditating. Do you know when you chew on something, you just oh wow, I gotta chew on that. That's called meditation. It's a truth that you just roll over in your heart and mind and it sticks with you. I've been meditating on this since Sunday night. Um, he said, God doesn't care about your past at all. Not at all. The only thing he cares about your past are the things in your past that have to get eliminated, eradicated, changed, whatever, that affect your future. Right. Everything else is just the past. He doesn't care. So, but he it does care about the things in your past that affect your future. Right. For instance, if you didn't forgive somebody, yeah, he cares about that. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you have, are holding an offense against somebody, yes, he cares about that because it affects your future. Right. If there, if you had an abortion and you didn't get healing in your heart or soul yeah. and it's affecting your future, he cares about that. Let's say that you uh, were wounded by a parent with words or, or sexual abuse or a brokenness of a, a divorce or something that never healed. He cares about that. Yeah. And he's going to keep taking you around the mountain till that gets healed. So you're not, you're not carrying that into your future. Right. Nice. And isn't that great? Yes. I love that. So so then then what would the prayer be? What would our heart posture be? Our heart posture would be Holy Spirit. What in my past needs to get healed so that I walk into my future healed in my body, soul, emotions mm -hmm. so that I am whole and I am ministering and living out of wholeness instead of brokenness. Right. Hallelujah. What a wonderful prayer, right? Mm -hmm. So so that really impacted me. He and then then what we're going to talk about here impacted me. He talked about the burning bush and Moses. He talked about uh how Moses is going along and it's like anyway, he did it way better than I will. But my focus today, I just felt like the Holy Spirit because you know, I teach out of what's burning in my heart. And we're in this proverb study and man, I'm loving every time of it. But now and then the Holy Spirit directs me to do what I call a one-off. Right. The Holy Spirit takes me on a little detour to go, hey, I've got something really cool for you to look at over here. Then you can come back to Proverbs. <laughs> and so today God has something really cool for us to look at over here so that we can get back to Proverbs. Yeah. So, so open your Bibles to James 4, verse, uh, verses 7 through 10, and we're going to take a little detour off of our study of Proverbs. The title of this study today is, What Would It Look Like? What would it look like? I like questions. If you ask the right question, you're going to get the right answer. So we're going to ask questions of ourselves. 
And we're, you're going to love this study. Pastor Jeff, hello, or Jennifer, I don't know who I'm talking to, because they got one account, Jeff Jennifer Warner. And I promise you, Jeff's middle name is not Jennifer. Okay? I love you, Jeff, and congratulations. I don't know if you guys are friends with Jeff Warner on, on Facebook. You should be. But your son, Dylan, come on, knockout. He had his first, first a boxing uh, match wow. in Alaska, and he knocked out his opponent. Oh, wow. Shut wow. the door. Come mm -hmm. on. It is incredible. I watched that over and over. I know you're so proud of him. All four of your boys, so proud of all of them. But I love you guys. Um, all right, we're going to say our receiving prayer. Here we go. Put out your hands like this. We have to receive from today. Yes. Today, there's new manna, new joy, new purpose, new love, new direction from God. Let's put ourselves in receiving mode. Say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Today, today, today is a brand new day. It's a brand new day. I am a receiver. I am a receiver. Say it again. I am. I am a receiver, a receiver of all of heaven, of all of heaven for, my life, for my life, for my family, for my family today. today. I, reset. I reset. The past is gone. The past is gone. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, reveal to me, reveal to me what in my past, what in my past needs, to get healed, needs to get healed so that I can reach my future. So I can reach my future. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy for Spirit. For being my teacher. For being my teacher. My comforter. My comforter. You show me about Jesus. You show me about Jesus. I'm in learning mode. I'm in learning I'm mode. I'm leaning in. I'm leaning in. And I'm receiving. And I'm receiving. All of the truth today. All of the truth today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You got to command your spirit to be alert and awake. Yes. And can I tell you something else? Hold it. Hold it. Sue? No. Who did I send it to? Wait, 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 wait. I got to read you this. This is a sidebar. Oh, where do I find it? I can't find it because that's my phone and I'm using my phone. I'll, I'll find it a different way while we're studying. There's something I got to share with you before the end of the day. Okay, here's the truth. I'll, I'll remember it, although not as well. Listen to me. Don't ask yourself how you're feeling. Tell yourself yeah. how you're feeling today. Oh, sure. That is using the authority God gave you. That's right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Command your spirit. Command your body to get in line with the word of God. Right. Your emotions will tell you how you're feeling. You don't have to ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pastor Brenda, your emotions will tell you how you're feeling. You don't have to ask. We do not cave. That is lower living. That is living in the natural in our soul. Yeah. We want to live in the supernatural, which is by faith in our spirit. Yeah. So today, this week, if you want to live in victory, overcoming victory, don't ask yourself how you're feeling. How are you doing today? Yeah. Every counselor and every therapist in the world that, that is feel? not a godly <laughs> counselor and therapist yeah. will ask you that and they'll take $150 an hour yeah. for the rest of your life to say, yeah. how do you feel today? Well, how did you feel when they said that? Well, what do you think about that? Well, how did they make you feel when they looked at you that way? Well, I'm so sorry that happened. You tell me more. Right. Tell me more. Tell me more. And our society is yeah. sick with self-reflection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should reflect to consider ourselves, but just for a moment and to keep looking forward <laughs> and just in the Holy Spirit yeah. to keep moving forward. We must, we must set our gaze with blinders on. Remember, you know, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Think about a magnifying glass. I preached mm -hmm. a message series on this years ago. Whatever you look at gets bigger. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. When you when you hold up a magnifying glass and you look at something, it gets bigger. If you hold a magnifying glass to your bills, your bills are going to get bigger. If you hold a magnifying glass to your offenses and who hurt you and who said this and who did this on Facebook and who doesn't like you, it's going to get bigger and it's going to crush you. Yeah. You got to set your gaze upon the cross upon Jesus, upon the author and the finisher of your faith and all these things. You know, there's that old, mm -hmm. that old hymn. Um, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of your glo glorious, of his glory and grace. When you look at the cross, come on, we just came through resurrection weekend. When you look at the cross, all of those other things fade away. And the, the magnify yeah. the Lord with me, the next line or two lines later yes. is, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. 
Come so on. the whole wow. point of it Good. is the, the point of gazing, yeah. the point of being in awe, the point of magnifying the Lord yeah. is that he will deliver you. Yeah. He lifts yeah. you to where he is yeah. Yeah. above your circumstances, above the criticism, above the junk, above the haters, above the liars. He lifts you out of that so that you can be delivered from all your fears mm -hmm. and all of your troubles. Come on. That's a free message for you. That's not even our study. We're not even getting going yet. <laughs> Love it. All right. I'm going to read these, these, these three verses. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you haven't underlined these verses in your Bible, you should. Seven to ten. Amen. Here is the verse that Pastor Scott preached on Sunday night that really, really just impacted me in a brand new way. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your, ha cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. So whose job is it to purify our hearts? Wow. Whose job is it to purify your heart? It's our job. Yes. It's our job to purify ourselves. It's our job to humble ourselves. We get it all turned around. We think mm -hmm. it's God's job to clean up our lives. We think it's God's job to humble. No, no, no. Humble yourselves before the Lord. Here it is. We draw near to God. We cleanse our hands. We purify our hearts. You double-minded. See, we can be double-minded. Hey, uh -huh. you can be a Christian going to heaven and still be living in the flesh, carnal, mm -hmm. double-minded, crazy train, as I call it. Crazy. Round and round yeah. and round the mulberry bush. Just go carnal Christians. Mm -hmm. Carnal means you're living out of your soul, your feelings. You're not being transformed by the renewing of your mind, which is exactly this message today. Here we go. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. That's that's those for who are double-minded, right? Like, don't be happy. Like, cons this is where you, we do look. Our, here it is, verse 10. Humble what? Yourselves in the sight mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what? He will lift you up. When you humble yourself, when you purify yourself, when you cleanse yourself, God will lift you up. You're getting frustrated at what at God about why you don't get, you know, why you're not achieving your dreams, why you're not going forward in life, why, why, why this is stuck. Well, listen, take back up, back up, back up. What is the Holy Spirit asking you to step away from? What is the Holy Spirit asking you to do to draw near to God in a new way? This is the teaching that I'm bringing today, which really is born out of the uh, Pastor Scott's message Sunday night. It was so good for my heart. I needed to hear it. So I'm going to tell you some things. And, and if you'll stick with me to the end of this, I promise you it can transform not just your day, but the rest of your life. It, no joke. No joke. So hold with me here. And if you got to leave Facebook or YouTube, come back and watch the rest of this, okay? Because this is a fresh, as daddy would say, this is hot off the wire. <laughs> Dad would say, Dad would take lots of detours and he'd go, come on, guys. I know, Londa, I told you I'm going to preach this series, but this is hot off the wire. I love a pastor. <laughs> Jeff, you're one of those pastors. You know, if, the, if you do this and the Lord tells you to do this, you're doing this. I love pastors and ministries and teachers who are willing to just step out and just leave the program. We got to be organized. We have to have order, but are willing to be spirit led because that's where the power is. So there's power in this message today. So please stay tuned. Here we go. Here's your write in. So if you don't have your notes, put your email there and I will send you these notes. You need to keep these notes so you can learn and study and teach yourself what I'm teaching you to just resist the devil without submitting and obeying God's commands is futile and will not bring freedom. Many believers today, oh, devil, get away from me. Devil, get away from me. Devil, I can't believe you're fighting me. Devil is a cute. I get so tired of Christians blowing up the devil. Stop talking about the devil. Stop over he's under your feet he's yes. defeated mm -hmm. it was finished 2000 years ago i there are believers who are like conspiracy conspiracy theory people and there there's a devil behind every door oh he's attacking me oh he's attacking me oh he's coming after me yes the war is real mm -hmm. yeah please mm -hmm. don't hear what i'm not saying the war is real mm -hmm. 
but you're a vic you're victorious when you I'm use the tools, that, right? right. Yeah. When you use the armor of God, when you use the word of God, yeah. when you cleanse yourself, when you're pure for self. But listen, the here is the key. To just resist the devil, we've forgotten the first, the first foundation. Mm -hmm. The first three words of this verse is the key to victory over the devil. What is it? It's submit to God. Right. Submit to God is step one. Then you resist the, to the devil and he will flee from you. If you're just trying to resist the devil, he's not going to flee from you. Submission and surrender is the key to life in Christ. The, the vine, the fruit must submit to the vine. If the fruit tries to be the vine, it's, it's dead. It's on the ground. It's toast. It's over. There are Christians who are living in complete defeat. I would say like Lisa does all the time, broke, busted, and disgusted. Yeah. You know, you don't have to just be in sin to be broke, busted, and disgusted. There are Christians who are broke, busted, and disgusted. All right? Why is that? Because we have failed to fully walk out those first three words of James 4, 7. Submit to God. This is what you did when you repented. God, forgive my sins. I'm an evangelist first, then a pastor. I let people came to Christ Sunday. I hope they did in your church. They, they surrendered their life to Christ. I was talking earlier about Harold, 51 years old, came to Jesus for the first time Sunday morning. It starts by submitting your will to his, but it doesn't end there. It's a daily submission of your will. It's a daily submission of your agenda. Right. Uh, oh, listen, did you hear me? I am messing with your world on purpose because I love you. You will never get to the power. You will never get to the anointing. You will never get to your destiny until you submit everything to God. Submit to God. Submit to God your finances. Tithe. Yeah. Tithe to your church. Submit mm -hmm. to God your, your schedule. Submit to God your marriage, your family, your career. Step two is to resist the devil. And can I say, yes, people please. Who, people who Here's submit, Pastor yes, Pastor I'm, Brenda. Talk to me. Else? Come here. Hi. <laughs> people who submit to God she, also get attacked, but correct? the but it's a short lived attack, and you have you have things in view. So you may still have a battle, mm -hmm. but it's short lived. It's from a whole different vantage point. So because, from a point of victory, right? Yeah. Because you've got you've got the unvictorious one who tries to resist the devil without submitting. They're toast. That's They're like toast. trying to go out to battle naked. Amen. And so, but people who are submitted to God will still get an attack of the enemy, but they see it coming. They've got a roar in inside. communion with the Lord. Oh yeah, and then they overcome. With the blood of the Lamb, Daily. by the word of their testimony, they're an overcomer, and they take others with them into victory. Amen. It's a whole different battle, but both things apply. Both apply. It applies to both people. Amen. But, yeah, but we still all have to submit. Yes. It's just how you then overcome. Lisa, talk yeah. to me about your overcoming. What did it look like for you? Um, okay. Yeah, I'm on there. What what part of overcoming? Like well, the just tell me what the Lord's saying to you right now. Part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to submit to um, going, staying in a program that I didn't want to stay in every day to get what God had for me. And every day I wanted to leave. And I remember I would get a one, I, seven years ago, I was in a pro, I mean, 14 years ago, I was in a program. <laughs> so it's been 14 years clean and praise God. You know, um, wow. 14 is a From big the number. darkness into remember the light, from death to life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing what God has done. Thank but you. every day, every, you're right. It is every Every minute of yes. every day, yes. you have to okay, submit Lord, to God. Yes. I, even though I don't want to do this thing and I don't want to, but you put these. Uh, well, I had leaders in the program, and I had to submit to them um, and do exactly what they said, and, and do this, do that. Hey, and, let me ask you a question. Yeah. So, are you telling me that submitting to God is submitting to authority? Submitting to the governing authorities that the Lord has put before you, because if you go against them, you're going against God. Right. Amen. That is what the Scripture says. So Amen. God has put. Whether it's a boss, right? Pastors, yeah, pastor, pastors. whatever God has put before you. And if you don't humble yourself and submit to them, even when you don't want to, you're going against what mm -hmm. authority that God Amen. has put before you. That's including our president. Amen. So, um, you know, whoever yes. it is, you hear pray that for them. Congress, hear that Congress. <laughs> even if, you just got to pray for them. Even you might not agree mm -hmm. with everything, but you just got to pray for them. 
Right. You know, um, yeah. my leaders, That's some of the true. leaders that I had were very, very tough on me. Well, God knows what I needed at the time. And he knows what you need, too. Uh, but humbling myself and submitting to them, even when I didn't agree with everything, mm -hmm. you know, and then. Um, but, yeah, God, God is good. He, he will lead you and guide you, too. I mean, obviously, God is our number one. Uh, authority and yes. when you learn to hear his voice really clear he will lead you and guide you right yes yes amen yeah, they're awesome they're and, oh yes. thank you for that Not thank easy. you for that now listen now listen let me let me let me can i answer something else right now let me answer something else you are not let's say you're a you're a wife or a husband mm -hmm. of someone who doesn't go to church well i'm i hear this all the time well you're supposed to submit to me like very often, this is wives. The husband says, "Well, you're supposed to submit to me." Well, we're not going to church. Are you supposed to submit to that authority? No. If an authority is taking you away from the plans of God, taking you away from the life of God, is leading you farther away from the truth in God than closer. No, you're not to submit to them. I hear I hear ladies all the time say, "Well, I'd really like to bring my kids to church, but my husband doesn't want to go." And go without them. Grab your kids and go without them. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> Duh. Hello. This is not brain surgery. I, but I find that it sometimes can become an excuse of laziness. Yeah. Because they're using that that kind of fake being. Yeah. Oh, I'm being religious and obeying my authority. No, that authority oh. is speaking on behalf of the devil. It's a blanket that to tell you don't be with the people of God. Mm -hmm. That is detrimental for your soul. You cannot follow authority that is not submitted to God. Again, forget, for, I don't care where you stand yeah. on your politics. For the president mm -hmm. to make that address that he did to America, talking about the resurrection yeah. of Jesus. Wow. Are you kidding me? It was like <laughs> refreshing to my soul. Yes. Come yes. on. God's working in his life. Pray yeah. for him. Yeah. Does he need to get some... Holy Spirit control in his tweets and yeah, his words. Yeah, yeah maybe. We all do. I think we all do. Nobody's right. Done. But yeah. thank God for a leader who understands that this nation was founded on godly principles yeah. and yeah. says yeah. Christmas for crying out loud. Right. Well, thank That's God. Right. So we can submit to that kind of leader, right? Okay, right. now we're talking about submitting. So are you hearing what I'm saying? I almost want to like preach this whole message on this one thing and not even do the rest of this study. Because I don't want to move on until you understand what I'm saying. What does this mean for your life? What areas of your life are stuck? I'm always about the truth of God's word and then the application of God's word. Remember, if you are always told this is what you're supposed to do. Okay, think about it as a parent. You've got a kid, right? Johnny, put your shoes on. 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 Guess what? A good parent will say, Johnny, put your shoes on. Bring them over here to me, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Yeah. Amen. And they put them on their lap, and they show them how to do the little rabbit ears or the yeah. little Velcro, whatever it is, and they teach how to do it. Right. There's so much teaching today that just says what we're supposed to do, but they don't tell you how to do it. It's, it's truth with the, this is why Jesus taught in parables. The kingdom of heaven is like, because he knew that the truth without the application and the picture wouldn't make it real for people. So this is why I need you to just sit and consider this for a second. What is it in your life that is stuck? Because I guarantee you, not based on my analysis, but based on the word of God, there is an area that is yet that has further surrender. Because the devil is done when we are fully in submission and obedience. Okay. Let's say, let's say that there's 10% of your life. Let's say that 90% is submitted to God. I'm speaking out of I'm speaking out of life a testimony here. Okay? Let's say 90% of your life is submitted to God, but there's still 10%. You know, there's there's an offense, there's maybe gossip, maybe there's a stronghold, maybe there's an addiction, maybe there's lot not good discipline with your time, you know. I'm gonna get to what God showed me on Sunday night. So stick with this study because I'm going to tell you what the Lord told me as I was listening to Pastor Scott's message because I'm always going, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? Yeah, so I'm asking you, what is God saying 
to you right now. What areas of your life, your marriage, your money is stuck? Because I would suggest to you that there's an area of further surrender so that you can get the full victory of the devil being gone in Jesus right. name. Because what area, whatever area isn't submitted is the area that you're giving him access to taunt you, yeah. torment you, yep. trouble you, mess with you, he has something on you. screw with you. <laughs> yeah. The devil has something on you. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Whatever is not submitted, the devil has something on you. Mm -hmm. Submitting to God in every area. And by the way, this will change as you mature in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sanctification. Sanctification. Thank you, Brenda. Mm -hmm. Sanctification is an old churchy word yeah. that simply means, and this is where I'm going with this. As you grow in God, the leash that God has on you grows shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Listen, I want you to think about fishing. You're fishing, right? Yep. And you get a big fish and you throw the rod way out there. God threw his rod way out there to reach us, right? Yeah. Some of us were out there a way. Some of us were out there miles. Some of us were out there miles. But God extended his love for God yeah. so loved yeah. the world. Yeah. God loved us first. He loved us best. He loved us fully. I got to get you. I got to get you. Mm -hmm. The prayers got to get you. And he got us. Yeah. Yeah. Now listen. But what did it take to get get to Jesus? What does it take to get in the boat? It's got to come closer and that he's going to reel us in. Now, remember, there is no in until heaven. The in the boat is not just salvation. It's heaven. We're constantly being reeled in closer to Jesus. The closer G we get to Christ, the shorter of a, of a, of a, of a, of a line is out there, right? He gets us closer, closer, closer to him. Our entire journey with God is one step closer, one step closer, one step closer. And then sometimes we run yeah. and we bolt. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Sometimes the fish gets that hook gone and they run again. Yeah. This is backsliding. Mm -hmm. This was my mama. My mama backslid from Jesus when she was young. That's when she met my dad, but she was never happy and she had to come back again. But the, when she came back again, she brought my dad with her. Okay. So sometimes you lose that fish, but God keeps going. He keeps going after. He leaves the 99 that are found to go get the one that's lost. But remember that heaven is in this analogy, in this parable is being in the boat. We are on a journey to heaven. Heaven is our home where we'll be with Jesus forever in perfect union. No sin, no trouble, no tribulation, no cancer, no disease, no bills, no nothing except Amen. joy and creativity <laughs> and, 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 and building. And trust me, heaven is not just floating naked on a cloud, strumming a harp, singing Amazing Grace. What a boring. My daddy said that's the most boring. Who would want to go there? I want to get some Marshall guitar amps and I want to I want to have a party. Right. I want to write some songs with David and with Rusty Goodman and sure. with my dad again and with David. I'm going to read books. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm going to grow and learn. Heaven is yeah. creativity. Heaven is growing. Heaven is one is is. Oh, gosh, I get excited about heaven. But here, here go back to my story. The closer you get to Christ, the more his hook is in you. Right. And the closer he holds you to them where you can't run and you can't sin like you used to. God gives a lot of grace. You know, when 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 you first come to Jesus, there's a lot of cleaning up to do. But he's out there. But, you know, just keep coming closer. Just stay with me. Just go to church. Read the Bible. But the closer you get to Jesus, hey, today, if you've been walking with the Lord a long time, the things that offend God are way different than they were when you first came to Christ. All sin offends God. But in that sanctification process, mm -hmm. more is expected to, more is ex to whom much is given, much is required. As you grow in God, trust me, this is what happens in like, for instance, Titus tells us that God's expectation mm -hmm. of a pastor or a leader is different from someone in, you know, God holds us accountable in his government. Right. You know, the senators in the Congress are, are held to a standard that's different than the everyday American. Mm -hmm. Right? You'd think, oh, yeah, let's talk. That's a really bad analogy. Wow. Scratch that. Scratch that. Drain the swamp. Can everybody say that with me? Drain the swamp. President Trump, drain the swamp. Listen, 
Let's get back to the right analogy. I just want you to know the things in my own heart. As I continue to submit to God every day and do my best to honor him and love him, the things I maybe used to, quote, get away with five years ago, ah, it's not happening now. Because I feel that grieving. I feel that that presence pull away. I feel not God's presence. He never leaves us or forsake us. I feel my pulling away because I'm not being obedient. Makes sense? Mm-hmm. So this is the growing in God that he's looking for, to just resist the devil without submitting and obeying God's commands is futile and will not bring freedom. So I need you to ask yourself before we move to the next point. Let's matter of fact, let's just pray. Everybody just just if you're able to just bow your heads and pray. And I'll I'll just just consider this now. This is between you and the Lord. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to reveal to myself and to my friends. Are there areas, are there areas of our heart, of our thoughts, any behavior, anything in our heart that you want us to submit to you so that we can resist the devil so he will flee from us? Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, speak now. You're so good. Everybody just tune out my voice. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying because the Holy Spirit will tell you. The Holy Spirit will show you, is there anything in me, God, that needs to go away, be realigned, be reallocated, my time, my agenda, my schedule, habits, words, thoughts? Is there is there anything where I'm stuck? Is there any area I'm stuck that needs further submission and surrender so that I can have victory in the battle? Wow. Speak to us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit is not deaf, so he's already told you whatever. I encourage in your own notes or just in your own mind, just write something down in your notes or just jot it down because we're going to get there in this study, okay? Amen. Now, uh I want you to turn, Pastor Brenda, would you please read 1 John 4, 19? We're going to keep moving in our notes. Are you enjoying this today? Amen. I want Amen. you to be blessed. This is this is hot off the wire. Because that's hot in my heart. Uh, if you can just say it nice and loud for yes. everybody. Yep. 1 John 4, 19 says, We love because he first loved us. Amen. God made the first move towards us. Remember, the initiator of this love affair is God himself. We do not initiate the relationship with God. God initiated the relationship with us. So here again, I'm I'm getting back to this draw near to God and he will draw near to you. The initiator of this love relationship is God the Father. And he extends his love to us. Now, whose move is it next? Right? Right. Whose move is it next? When somebody says, come on in, or here I've got a gift for you, what, whose move is it next? It's ours, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's our move next, which brings us to this truth of now we must submit to that request. We must mm-hmm. submit to that love. We must submit to that door, so to speak. Oh, the Bible says Jesus is the door. Yeah. He invites us to come through that door, but we got to walk in. We got to come in. All right. So, so the first move is God's. The second move is ours to come in. Now, as we move towards this, I want you to see this truth. Relationships, all relationships can grow stagnant without deliberate and intentional focus and time. Stagnant. You've heard the, the story. I say it often. These people that have been married 54 years were driving along in their pickup, an old farmer. And, and, and she just, she, she was just growing so weary because she never had any affection or verbal love from her husband ever, ever 54 years of marriage. And finally, 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 Sally says to, she gets the, the courage to say to him, they're driving along in the pickup truck to, to, to Harold. Sally says to Harold, Harold, do you love me? He just drives. 
what the eleven's going on. <laughs> Harold, do you love me? Harold, do you love me? And he pushes the tr truck in park and he pulls it over and he looks over at Sally and he says, woman, I told you I loved you 54 years ago when we got married. And if something ever changes, I'll let you know. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, oh, wow. Now, some people, this is how they live. Yeah. 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 If you don't keep dating your spouse, don't be surprised when they say hasta la vista, baby. If you don't keep saying, if you don't keep doing the things that wooed them to marry you when you were dating, your your marriage is going to grow stagnant. Right. It's going to grow stagnant, and it's not going to be fresh. You got to keep your love alive. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. with our kids. That's with our spouses. That's with our family. Mm -hmm. It needs intentional focus and time. But what is the most important relationship we have? That's God. Mm -hmm. The most important relationship of any relationship mm -hmm. is God. I just want you to understand this idea of drawing nearer, this idea of coming closer, the idea of growing in two thousand. Okay, let me ask you this. Sam Benson was here and preached and prophesied over us. He said, this is going to be the best 12 months of your life. Right. Every month, closer to God. Every mm -hmm. month, greater glory. Oh, Every nice. month, after yeah. it has been happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's been happening in this house. It's been happening in my life, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. For us, why? Because we went. Yeah, that's what I want. So I've been in my calendar. I've been writing the miracles of God every month at the top of every month. Yes. Do it. Yes. The answered prayers. So that I can go back at the end of year and see how God took us closer. Greater glory. Greater increase. Greater word. Every month. Now, here's the next. Uh, Pastor Brenda, would you please read 2 Corinthians 3.18. Go to that in your Bible if you have it. 2 Corinthians 3.18. 318. We don't want our relationship with God or we, with each other to be stagnant. Stagnant is yuck. What happens when a pool of water gets stagnant? There's bugs. Yeah, There's bacteria infection, grows. bacteria, yeah. toxic yeah. waste grows. Mm -hmm. If your relationship with God or with your spouse is not growing, mm -hmm. it is going backwards and it's getting stinky. Stinky. Moving, right? Keep the water moving. Keep the love alive. Keep it fresh. Right. Keep it good. Maybe some of you ladies need to make a uh, plan. Start. Hey, hey, a great, by the way, let me just throw in a little tip for every married person here. Most, pe most people, I got a couple single people here. For those who are married, a great sex life does not begin at night in the bedroom. A great sex life begins in the morning when you're texting, when you're calling, when you're Snapchatting, when you're saying, man, I can't wait to hang out with you tonight. Let's get the kids to bed early and let's go to the bedroom and do married stuff. Like it begins early in the day. There's no men and women are totally different. OK, men are microwave ovens. Women are crock pots. Mm -hmm. yep. So if any men are watching and you want to have a great sex <laughs> life, you better turn the crock pot on early in the day <laughs> or you're or you're going to get the big hoop tonight. OK, so start loving. Call her. Say, oh, yeah. baby, I'm thinking about you. I can't wait to hug you tonight. Come on. Oh, let's let's yeah. sneak out of the house and go make out up, uh, uh, you know, the hills we used to work. Come on, do the stuff you used yeah, to do yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. when you weren't supposed to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. But it gets stagnant. Yeah. The same position, the same day, the same time. Gross. I think God says the same thing. Come on. Stop. Stop loving me the same way at the same time. Yeah. Stop loving me only on the Sunday morning evening. at 10 a.m. when you right. go to church. Yeah. Love me yeah. when yeah. when 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 you don't plan to love me. Love me all the time. Yeah. Love me in your car. Yeah. Love me yeah. at the other times. Yeah. Man, I'm preaching something today. Yeah, yeah. Love me when you're angry. I made that yeah. a huge change. And Come on. A huge difference. In my yeah. life. Like instead of going to God when I was in the rut and down in the dumps and I needed, like I felt like I needed right. assistance. And said, I don't ask right. for anything from him. I just thank him for all the yeah. things. You know what? Because he knows what I need Amen. and he knows the bad stuff. So Amen. I don't go to him and say, oh, I need your, I just say, thank you for all you've given me. Thank you for what you're right. doing. So good. You know, and, and know that even the bad stuff mm -hmm. gets me somewhere good. Mm -hmm. You know, let so, me ask you a question. How does it make you feel as a parent when the only time your kids come to you is when they're having a crisis? Exhausted. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Now, thank God yeah. that God 
is not us. (laughs) He always has grace and mercy towards us that never stops. That's why he's perfect and I am not. That's why he's holy and I am on my way, but I'm not. But understand the principle is still the same. There's so many Christians who run to God in a crisis, run to God when they can't pay their bills, run to God when they need something. But when things turn around and they gets back on stable, then it's just, we'll do our God time. Maybe if they decide to go to church, yuck. If Brent doesn't love me in the laundry and taking the trash out, you it's going to be pretty cold in the bedroom. (laughs) <laughs> what makes the bedroom work now i'm talking about intimacy here read the song of solomon for yourself right i'm talking about intimacy with the lord it's not sexual intimacy but intimacy is intimacy intimacy is intimacy if you want intimacy with god you better make it work when it hurts you better make it work when, when you're not feeling like doing it I just don't feel like praising God. Well, that's the very moment you need to do it the most. The very, I keep, okay, let's go back to the married side of things. You know, if you've been married at all, you get into fight and then you end up making up and then you make love. And then you're like, wait a second. Why did we do that back when we were fighting? Why did we fight at all? Why did we fight at all? Because when you make up and then everything's good, then it's like, Oh, we're back together. We're in union. We're, we just, we work it out. Right. Well, the same thing. We're always fighting with God. Come on guys. Let's worship God when we don't feel like it. Let's, let's be in our small group when we don't think we have time. Let's do the right thing. No matter what we feel, this is maturity in God. This is the 24 seven relationship he wants. Mm -hmm. I want my husband to love me, not just was it when he's in front of me and, and I'm, and I can do something for him. I want him to love me when nobody's looking. I want him to love me and and celebrate me to people that I don't even know that has never met me. Right. This is what God wants from us. He wants intimacy all the time. Not just when we're in the mood. (sighs) No, actually, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump something. I'm gonna jump because we don't have time to go through all this. I'm gonna do this later. Yes. I want you to jump in your notes to where it says here are some spiritual disciplines because I want to get to the end of this today. There's a I don't know what page in notes. There's here are some spiritual disciplines. Do you see that? Oh, in it's your right notes? at the bottom of the first page. Yeah. 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 The bottom of page one in your notes says. Here are some spiritual disciplines you will find helpful as you draw close to God. We're trying to go to page two. All right. Are we all on the same page? All right. Can I get some high fives and thumbs up? Are you with me? Facebook, are you with me? YouTube. Uh, Carla, are you with me? Sharon, are you with me? Okay, good. I'm talking now about drawing close because remember God made the first move. Now it's our move. Here are some things in your, in your domain. Number one, watch and pray to overcome your struggle by relying on God's grace. I'm going to read this scripture verse to you. It is Matthew 26, 41. Here's the scripture for this, Matthew 26, 41. Hang on. Step one, Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray. Ooh, this is such a good thing. It's kind of like submit and then resist. Watch and pray. Now watch. Matthew 26, 41. These are Jesus' words. He says, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. Mm -hmm. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. If you just pray here. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Come on, somebody. If you just pray, oh, God, I don't want to be that whiner complainer anymore. Oh, God, I don't want to, you know rely on 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 media or entertainment if you just pray that away no you need to be watching for where the temptation's coming from watch your schedule be alert hey wait a second i know what that looks like that looks like a distraction to my commitment to spend time with god Mm -hmm. i see it coming Mm -hmm. you see your teenager coming home when they're all in a while okay Danger, Batman. I got to put my armor on right now. Come on, Holy Spirit, get me prepared. Or you might see your husband walking in and you can just tell by the way he slams the car door in the garage that he is ticked off. Mm -hmm. Seriously, women have an instinct about these things. Mm -hmm. You can just tell by how someone walks if they're in a bad mood or a good mood. Is that true, Lisa? Yes. 
a big yeah. part of communication. Huge. Mm-hmm. The yeah. nonverbal stuff. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're watching for that, you can be be aware and be awake to go, okay, okay, I know how this story ends. All right. Now, yes, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me guard my tongue right now. Help me not to take offense right now. Help me not to get in a stir right now. It's not just praying. It's watching and praying, discerning. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So if we watch and pray together, it's that twin track. It's, it's, it's the submitting and then the resisting. It's the, it's, it's both things together. That's praying effectually because now you've got the wisdom of God. Okay. Talk about that. When, when believers pray, it's true that anything we pray according to the the will of God, he wants to accomplish. But if we pray based on his wisdom and, and a revelation of, of the truth that he's revealing at the moment, and that's what Jesus did everywhere he went. It, he would he would come into a place where maybe the the disciples were um, were going to accomplish something and run into resistance. He'd run into the Pharisees. He'd run into people that were contrary. And it says, and discerning their thoughts, he would speak. He you know, and so he had revelation from the Father that was beyond just a prayer life of Lord. I position through the day. To walk in, I'm going to go to this town and this town and this town. When he ran into individuals, he was in discernment mode. He was in a place of wisdom and understanding. So part of our our need to have the infilling of the Holy Spirit is for that that moment-to-moment discernment. Have you ever come into uh, an environment, a restaurant, uh, somebody's home, and, and you just get a a weird sense of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. mood, of heaviness, yeah. of, uh, or maybe just the opposite. Maybe it'll be lightness and joy yeah, and peace. Yeah, right. And so that's your discernment in operation. It's not just instinct. When we're in Christ, we're asking the Holy Spirit to make us watchful. To, that's what he was talking about to the disciples in the garden. Watch and pray lest you be led into temptation was about discern what's happening in the spirit realm even before you pray so that you can pray effectually. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we are, maybe we're, we're feeling insecure about our ability to sense the, the things of God. But you know, if we're just open to that, it, it just rest in that God will never violate his own character. He'll, yeah. he won't, he won't show you something and then have you move into uh, a place of evil because that's mm-hmm. never him. He won't have you move into something that is contrary to his word. So if you're coming into a place, just be open in your heart because that makes you that effectual um, discerner of what he is up to. And that's a that's another part of growing in the Lord is being able to stop and ask God, what's really happening here? Yeah. And, and you do that silently behind the scenes. It's amazing then. And I would do that with people who were upset. They'd come into the into mm-hmm. a room and they would be in attack mode asking the holy spirit what's really up can disarm amen because now you're effectually addressing the real issue yeah. and it it really. calms the waters yeah. and so that watch and pray is really a point of being effectual with the moment it is the moment we're in because god knows that we live moment by moment mm-hmm. he's he's as concerned about your ability to discern moment by moment as he is about your big spiritual gifts that you give out mm. on Sunday morning. Amen. And your talents. He wants your moment in the, by moment. In the place where nobody sees it. And that's right. intimacy. He wants, yeah. it, that's intimacy. That's intimacy. Oh yes. my gosh, this is good. Now listen, I want to just park here for a second. I'm talking about watching and praying and I'm talking about the danger of the ditches. Everyone say that with me. The danger of the ditches. Liz, send me that title in an email, would you please? I need to preach a series on that. Danger of the ditches. I want to talk about the ditches. So we have watch and pray. If you just pray, but you're not alert in the Holy Spirit, if you're not awake, if you're numbed by distractions or food or whatever. Okay, so... I want to get, I want to, in the next 15 minutes, because we have 15 minutes, I'm going to get to what the Lord told me to do, because I'm just going to use my own story. Ditches. If we just resist, but we don't submit, no, it's got to be both. We just, if we just pray, 
without watching and being alert. What's going on? What's the Holy Spirit saying, right? That's the prophetic side, right? Got to be both. What about this? What if we just have faith? I got people that are dancing. They'll bring the flags. They're shouting hallelujah. But you'll never, come on, you'll never get them to do any work. Faith without works is dead. You get people that are going to every conference in the world. They'll be the first ones on the first row shouting hallelujah. And you try to get them to help you feed people on a Saturday or go do random acts of kindness or go help fix the car of a single mom or go do anything that requires work. And they go, oh, I'm so sorry. That's my time to pray. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Forget that. That is religious, pharisaical, looking yeah. good, but no, no guts. Yeah. You no, you need both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's faith yeah. and works. Mm-hmm. You were not saved by our works, but the works prove that we're saved. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Words, yeah. Come on. That's true. I'm a little stirred up. <laughs> Are you? Because there's people in churches going to church every day, some of them, yeah. praying every day, but they're not out where the world is winning souls. They're not sharing their testimony. They're not inviting yeah. people to church. They're not getting out with their neighbors. Do you know how many Christians I've asked? Tell me about your neighbors. It's one of the tests. I'm just going to give you a little inside track. It's one of the tests I ask. Hey, tell, tell me about those people that live next door. Oh, I've really never met them. They kind of come in and go out. You know what? That's the sign of a complacent Pharisee. Mm-hmm. My granddaughter invited her whole kindergarten. Say that again. Aww. My granddaughter Aww. invited her whole kindergarten to Easter service. Oh. Come on. Oh. Come on. Five, now look. Five families came. I, I'm messing five with you guys. Five, five, five families <laughs> came. Did you hear that? Her wow. granddaughter, her granddaughter invited her whole class and five families came to her oh, church. To guys, <laughs> now listen. We 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 want we, we we listen to me. We can pray on our knees until they are bloody raw. Yeah. And we should pray. Don't hear what I'm not saying. Right, right, right. But right, we, right. if if our prayer does not lead us to going and making disciples, it is futile right. and fruitless. Because it goes yeah. the other way just as strong. There's a lot of doers that don't pray, and there's a lot of uh-huh. prayers that don't do. And we Thank you. Did you hear that? There's a lot <laughs> yeah, of doers that yeah. don't pray. Mm-hmm. So then they're just like gerbils on right. a wheel. Right. Yeah. They're going, doing, going, 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 but there's right. no fruit. Right. Because they're not alert and, and, and walking in the spirit. Right. They're... They're just in motion, but there's no progress. And then there's a lot of prayers who are earnest. They're earnest (laughs) and they're, Uh they're wonderful people, but you can't get them out of the seat. As daddy would say, you can't get them out of their seat onto their feet into the streets to win people. It's both. What about law and grace? Both are a ditch. You got your ultra law people, legalism. Oh, look at that girl. Her shirt's too low. Oh, look at that person. They got a lot of tattoos. Oh, look at that person. I think I heard they're gay. Oh, look at that person, that legalism, that law, that judgment. That's the same people that killed Jesus. Come over here to grace. Ultra grace. I believe in grace. But if you're way over here, I can do whatever I want. I'm going to heaven. I can sin. Mm -hmm. I don't have to sanctify my life. Mm -hmm. I can dance with the world. I can party. I can do my thing. Mm -hmm. And nobody will know in secret sins and all kinds of stuff that, that, oh, well, I'm under the grace. I'm under the grace. Yes, you are. But that's dangerous. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. They have to move. So back to my point of watch and pray. Watching is who's coming in the door, Lord. Can I tell you something? I have to tell my teams here all the time. I'm just going to pick on my own teams because I love my team. we got the best volunteers I've ever worked with in my whole life. This team at the Father's House are the finest. of. But my team will tell you, and some of them are around this table, if you want to tick your pastor off, let me walk in to where you're standing and see you huddled up talking to another Christian mm. that you know we're in life group with. Don't you dare be huddled up with just the people you know. You need to be watching who's coming through the door that I don't know. Who's coming through the door that's new that I don't have a relationship with. Who's coming through the door. That's kind of looking at signage. You can tell when somebody's new, they don't know where the bathrooms are. They don't, they're kind of hesitant. They're kind of hold back a little bit. 
I train this team and our pastors, be on the lookout. Watch. And don't you dare turn your back to a door. I will snap. In love. <laughs> you know what? And if, I, if I'm not real, if I'm in my humanity, sometimes it's not in love. And I have to wrap back around and say, I'm so sorry I said it like that. Because I do that too. Tons of new people on Sunday. But you know what? My team, they're working. They're, but they've been trained. See, we need training. I need training. We all need training. Don't talk to somebody you know. Sunday morning, that's for life groups. Yeah. Life groups is for the people you know and to build relationships and enjoy your friends. Sunday morning is only about the people that aren't as close to the boat yet. They aren't in the tank. You know, they're not close to Jesus yet. They're, they got to be drawn into the family. And if you're really good, you can do both things well. You're right. <laughs> yeah. You're right. If you're really good, you can do both things well. That's true. But some people yeah. Yeah. haven't learned that skill yet. And so... That's a, that's a maturity thing too, but it's a training thing. We all need to be trained. Yeah, yeah. Come early. Come early and visit with your or friends. Your friends. Or better, better yet, serve too. on a team. Yeah. Here we go. Better there yet, serve go. on a team. So you have to be here early. Yeah. Then you're on a team with your friends. You've prayed with your friends. You've had a huddle with your friends so that when the doors open, bam, you're there for everybody. Now, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do something here. I'm going to I'm really jumping around in my notes, but here listen to me. Here's what we're going to do next Tuesday. Bring these same notes back. I'll have her send them again. I'll have Liz send them again. Bring these same notes back. We're going to fill in everything. Right. But I got to get to the application. Amen. So the first application is watch and pray. But here's the real power of today. I want to go to the very last thing. What would it look like? Here's the title of my, my study today. What would it look like? Everybody say that with me. Oh, what, what would it look, look like, like to make more room, room for God, God in my day? day. Here's the question. Remember now, our core scriptures draw near to God. If you're drawing near to God, you're drawing farther away from something else. You're never static. You're either, you're going too closer to God or you're growing farther away from God. If So now God has loved you. He's extended this invitation to come closer, which he has. Now we have to respond. By drawing closer to him, which means we draw farther away from the distractions, mm -hmm. from the habits. Now, let me tell you what the Lord told me. Because in just a moment, I'm going to have you ask the Lord. And actually, you might only come up with one thing. Today, I don't even want you to do two and three. I want you to do one. Don't start writing it. Sue, you're such a good student. She's already <laughs> to point two. Yeah. Wow. She's already to point two. But, but now listen, I, I'm going to get to this punchline here because this is power. This is power. You know what? This is power to transform. This is power to transform our lives. So this is potent stuff right here. This is this is TNT Bible Jesus power transformation. And yes, I'm coming hot off of Resurrection Sunday. A lot of power. So I and I'm feeling this message. So as Pastor Scott was preaching, as Pastor Scott was preaching on Sunday, I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, what would you have me do? And I actually said it. We guided a time at the end of application. We had everybody who was there on Sunday night, everyone who was there. We, I, uh, applying what Scott's teaching was, I, I said, okay, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you? What is one thing the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now to do this week? So when you write number one in a few minutes, I want you, because we're going to pray a prayer at the end of this in a few minutes, to commit to this daily habit every day this week. And when we come back next Tuesday, we're going to share our testimonies and we're going to talk about how it went. Okay. I promise you, it's not a mystery. I promise you, you're going to have the best week ever. Okay. Of course I am. Of course you are <laughs> because you're going to expect it and you're doing something to do it. You're not just praying to have it. You're actually doing it. So here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. I, I went around the room. There were many different things. Brenda, help me remember some of the things. One person said, one person said, I need to do better at soul care. Like I'm always taking care of other people. I've got to take care of myself. That was cool. And so that person, that person committed to, I'm going to just back off, make sure that I'm. There was a person felt they were doing more than being. Be, you know? Yeah. That yeah. person felt they were doing more than being it. So they needed to balance mm -hmm. that out. See the right. ditches. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was okay. Cool. Another person, another married couple who were there said, you know what? We've come into this habit. We come home from work and we just sort of, what was the phrase? Gel out. Gel out. 
the wife said she calls it gelling out. Mm -hmm. And for them, gelling out meant watching like Family Feud or just some stupid game show or something. And then what would happen is because the guy is up super early and works hard, he'd end up falling asleep during the TV show. And then they just kind of go their separate ways and get to bed whenever they get to bed. I'm filling in the blank there. So they, the Holy Spirit was telling them, turn off that stuff, you know, communicate. Maybe do that last when you wouldn't want to fall asleep. But first, talk about your day together. Connect. No TV. No electronics. Just connect. Talk. And then you can go to sleep. But mm-hmm. having achieved something greater and being closer to you, each other and God. Okay, that was one thing. What are some other things that popped up? Um, the honest surrender. Mm. We get so busy in our mind or we're just reading the word, but we need to reflect and hear the wisdom of God. Thank you. Honesty with God. To really tell him what you're feeling. To be honest in your thoughts and prayers. To not hide from God. To really be straight with him. I am frustrated. I am mad. God can take it. He's got strong shoulders. Mm -hmm. Honesty brings us to a place of truth. We have to be honest with where we are. Stop pretending. Stop Mm -hmm. pretending your marriage is okay. If it's not okay, be honest about it. Get help. Be honest with yourself about everything. That was a great truth. So it came my turn. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. I'm just telling you what he told me. The Holy Spirit told me right the minute I asked him, he said, I'm kind of addicted to political news. I'm sort of addicted to Fox. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the Holy Spirit said, stop watching Fox News. And right away I went, but I'm a leader. I need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you know what? The Holy, Holy Spirit is so good. I always say Jehovah Nisi is very often Jehovah Sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Seriously. The Holy Spirit, as soon as, and now this is all happening simultaneously, by the way, Scott's got the mic. Other people are talking and the Holy Spirit's talking to me. Right. Don't you love that? Right. The Holy Spirit's talking to me and he goes, no, just go to the Twitter feed of news. Cause I've got, tw- mm-hmm. I've got Twitter on my every device. Yeah. Go to the Twitter feed and just read the headlines. Right. I can grab in one minute. That's how I do. <laughs> what would might take away an hour or an hour and a half of my time just watching right. Fox News? Because right. I, I, fam- I have my I have my I have my favorite commentators, and if you yeah. know how they bait you, oh, you know, Rudy Giuliani yeah. yeah, will be yeah. be on in the next half hour. Oh, I love Rudy. Okay, right. I want to hear what he has to say. Right. Well, then, by the I but if, this accumulates, yeah. and it takes me off focus. Mm-hmm. And there's thirty minutes or ten minutes or a half hour, or an hour. That could have been used to getting to my destiny. That's what the Holy Spirit talked to me about. So I'm only a day and a half in. I mean, this was Sunday evening. So what did I do? I didn't watch it at all yesterday. It was kind of a reset day. Didn't tune in. I haven't watched any live Fox News, but I went to Fox Mm -hmm. News at the this morning, early this morning when I got up. I went to Fox News, which I have on on my app, and I watched it at the top of the hour. Yeah. So at the top of every hour, they give just the headlines, like the top stories, right? right? So I watched it for about five minutes this morning, got just the upload, download. We need to pray for the Christians in Sri Lanka. Oh, yeah. right. They covered that. There's an earthquake I hear in uh, Rihad. Uh, oh, in the Philippines. Yes, there's an earthquake, but yeah. there's something in Rihad. Is it flooding? In Mexico. Uh, anyway, yeah. there are a few things I just went, oh, Lord, I need to pray. And then I'm done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel good. Yes. I feel like I've helped redeem the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is this is what the Holy Spirit said to me for drawing near to God this week, yeah. taking one step closer. Yes. One step closer. So now I ask you, I want you just to pray and consider. I want you to only, some of you might, might maybe the Lord tells you all three things right now, but I really want you just to get to one. This is private between you and the Lord. I want you to pray and say, Lord, what would it look like to make more room for God in my day today and every day this week. (laughs) And then write that down. And then in a minute, we're going to pray a prayer that the Lord helps us with his Holy Spirit help and strength to commit to that every day this week. I'm going to fill in a bunch of stuff from, from the study that talks about disciplines of fasting, prayer, other things that will help you with this. But this is what God is saying today. So just take a moment. Ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, speak now to those who are watching. One thing, Lord, you gave me one thing Sunday night, and I'm doing it this week, every day this week. And I know that you, I'm going to feel closer to you. 
at the end of the seven days, give this to my friends. Now, one thing to do every day, it might be many times a day if it's like not watching TV or I don't know, whatever the distraction is. The distraction from my friend was watching Family Feud every night. The distraction for me has been watching political news too much. I'm not saying I'm never going to watch Fox News. I'm saying I got to bring it back. Watch mm -hmm. just the headlines and move on. That was a distraction for me. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? Here's the title of the study. What would it look like to make more room for God in my day today? And we're going to do this for seven days. Seven days. Watch and pray. Getting our faith and our works together. Watch and pray. What would it look like? Did God give everybody something here? Yeah. What about you? Oh, hi, Pastor Paul. Thank you, honey. You did. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, nice to see you without your beard. You're so handsome with your beard, but you, <laughs> you and you and uh, your beautiful <laughs> wife looked amazing on Easter Sunday. I, I, I love Pastor. I love the Marzons. And, and they're just some of Brent and my favorite people in the whole wide world. God bless you. God bless you. So what would it look to what would it look like? That's the title of this study. What would it look like? What would it look like this week, today? What are you going to do? You can pray your rest of your life and it won't fix it. You got to move. Cleanse yourselves, purify yourselves, humble yourselves, submit to God and then resist the devil. Submit. What is it like in the submission to God in your time? Everybody have something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Are you comfortable sharing? If you're not comfortable sharing, don't say it. But if you're comfortable sharing, I want you to. I already told you what mine was. Mine is to, st to, to just take the headlines off of Twitter or just at the top of the hour with Fox News and stay off of political media because I'm kind of a political junkie. That's my one thing this week to draw near to God. James 4, 8. Okay. Brenda, what did the Lord tell you? Can you? Do you feel like sharing or no? You don't want to? Okay, Kristen? Um, I put down something that I, I felt a while ago. Um, it was just to read scripture, uh, spiritual scripture or like literature or scripture. Yeah. Um, and I actually put a time on it, like 15 minutes a day because I can give 15 minutes Yeah. and grow. And Amen. so I did five in the morning, 10 at night Ooh. to see if I can Great. balance it out. That's Ooh. your one thing. Yeah. Great. Carol, are you comfortable sharing or would you rather? Yeah. <laughs> you want to yeah. share or you, you don't want to share? Yeah, I'll share. Oh, share. Go ahead. What yeah. is it? Well, I, I read, um. Well, an email, and then I'd always play Minesweeper. Yes, games. yes. And so it's like get rid of the Minesweeper or lessen it. There you go. And instead read more, not necessarily just the Bible, but other, other books. Amen. Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit told my friend Carol, if you didn't mm -hmm. hear that, she would, would very often get distracted reading email, and then she'd play Minesweeper, this game. Oh my gosh, don't talk to me about gaming on phones. <laughs> oh, hours and hours down the toilet. Come on, just mindless. And you know what? I get it. I used to have this little bubble game on my phone. And you know, I would do it a little bit before I rest. It kind of just made my mind rest. But guess what? Even a good little fun thing can become a stronghold, uh -huh. can become a hook in your time. And it can just, mm -hmm. oh, I got to do this. And it becomes one more, one more. It's just a distraction. Okay, good for you. Are you comfortable sharing, Liz? Sure. Um, just to have that real focused time when I first wake up in the morning of devotion and praying and reading the Bible. Just spend the half right. hour. It doesn't have to be huge. It just can be All right. half hour just sitting there doing so that. So faithfully, the first time, first thing in the morning, yeah. half getting hour. Up, getting dressed and then sitting down. and That's your that one time. thing. Yep. Oh, wow. Yep. Well, you're going to have the best have week ever. A second. Decluttering, too. That's a big part. Like decluttering. A second is decluttering. Wow. And, oh, and that's yeah. a huge part for me because, you know, I love to craft. So um, you get a lot of things going and when might I need this, mm -hmm. you know, and that's a big part for me. So um, I've been working on that just, and then go. So guess what? Focusing. Guess what? That verse is for you. Cleanse yourself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Find out Purify yourself. Do. Cleanse yourself. Cleanse yeah. your space. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's mm -hmm. a big deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. If your space is cluttered, if your car is cluttered, if your desk is cluttered, that's part of my day to day. You know, we just came and Pastor Paul's on. Those of us who came through Easter that work in a church, yeah. 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 you know, Sue, right? We all got Liz. We got clutter, man, because yeah. we've all just kind of oh, Good Friday, Holy Thursday, Wednesday. It's, it's all now. yeah. But today, <laughs> today is the day to just declare. Yes. Good. How about you, Lisa? Did the um, I work mostly nights, but sometimes when I come home, I'll watch a little TV. But there's nights I don't work. 
Um, so less TV at night. Less TV at night. Praise yeah, God. I limit myself to one hour only. There you go. You yeah. know, and I like uh, that you put a limit on it. Yeah. 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 And you know, if, I mean, even if I watch, I don't even know if I'll even do that. So, and then instead That's awesome. of to get closer to God, um, there's a lot of things that I, I could do, you know, but there's different Bible studies that I have. There's, um, you know, I'm in the process of writing a book. There's decluttering. Yeah. You know, but I Amen. the stuff that gets closer to you. Hey, on Facebook and yeah. on YouTube, yeah. why don't you guys tell me? Because I want to read yours too. If mm-hmm. you're comfortable mm-hmm. sharing, put what mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit is telling you to do to draw near to God this week. One thing every day. Just write it there on YouTube in the comments and on Facebook because I want to read those. How about you, Pastor same, Brenda? Same thing, just increasing. I have a great morning uh, habit yeah. Yeah. and even a really yeah. decent afternoon habit. And then I give myself permission to really just in the evening, just like whether it's mindless reading mm-hmm. or or watching thoughts or watching yeah. something. Yeah. It's yeah. not a bad Dr. thing, but it's, it's not too, bad. it can be too long or too much yeah. just because I'm giving myself that yeah. permission to just veg out that mm-hmm. instead of jello. Je- veg veg out. Out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Scott and I are doing the same thing. Why not? Why not say that third time a day that we have a time yes. of reflection instead of giving ourselves that veg out time? Nice. So that we're both challenging each nice. other. Nice. Sue, are you comfortable sharing? Yeah, one of my most political pieces. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she, the Lord said the same thing to her oh, yeah. political yeah. news. Yeah. 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 Yes. Should. I'll share now. Okay. Go ahead, Brenda. Um, I want to, I, I still want to, in the morning when I get up, my very first thing is to be in the Word mm-hmm. and whatnot. And, and I have, now I'm to the point where I've got so many things that I still can all morning on. But I'm not spending time with my guy. Mm-hmm. Now, what I want to do every day is spend time sharing with each other about the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So she she has a very disciplined uh, habit with the Lord. But the Holy Spirit told my friend Brenda to spend more time sharing with her husband. Just okay. talking with her husband. Yeah. So I keep saying... Right. Yeah. She looks like a Brenda maybe today. Oh, I, call, I, I okay. called you Brenda. I know your name yeah. is Sandy. Thank you, Carol. I'm t- <laughs> I get it wrong. She knows who you're talking about. That's she, why she loves Brenda. You so much. I like the way Brenda looks, so that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love you, Sandy. I love you so much. Okay. So or did anyone share on Facebook or YouTube what the what the Lord's telling them? Hey, you guys gotta talk to me. More prayer and Bible time. More prayer and Bible time. Okay. And I encourage you, Pam. Thank you for that. That's my wonderful friend from Chamberlain. Pam, more prayer and Bible time is not tangible. It is not a measurable goal. I encourage you to take another step because more is not a measurable word. Mm. If you do 10 minutes now, up it to 20 minutes. Put an actual number on it. Put an actual time on it. More is not tangible. Like like Lisa just put a tangible lid on TV time. She will maybe not watch TV, but if she does, it's only going to be a maximum of one hour. That's a tangible, measurable goal. Good. Good. You put a time on yours too. Good. Hey, has this helped you today? I hope this has blessed you. And we're going to remember, we're going to continue part two of this same study. What would it look like next week? And then we'll get back to Proverbs. So what would it look like? We'll finish this next week. I want to say a prayer over you. If you're in the Burnsville area, a couple of just reminders for the Father's House family. This Saturday is a big day. I'm doing a um, uh, join the team class. If you're new to the Father's House and want to join the family, it's at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. to noon right here in the fireside room. 10 a.m. to noon right here in the fireside room. But, or if, if, yeah, if you've never, if you've been coming for a long time and you've never become part of the Father's House family, um, it's a partnership class. It's a join the family class, join the team class. And I'll be teaching 10 a.m. to noon this Saturday. There's also a youth fun day at three o'clock mm-hmm. at Cliff Fen Park for seventh to 12th grade. If you're seventh to 12th grade kids, grandkids, get them to Cliff Fen Park with Pastor Chris, Christian, uh, Cherith, aunt at three o'clock on Saturday. And Liz, mm-hmm. Skateville, this Saturday, Ooh. 4.30 to 6.30. This is for families and yes. kids. Exciting. Family and kids roller skating, 4.30 to 6.30 this Saturday Ooh. at Skateville. So one of those things are going to bless you. Wednesday night, get in a life group, mm-hmm. come to church, 6.30. There's life groups for everybody in the family. I want to pray a blessing prayer for you that this word, uh, it, this word is still challenging me, Pastor Brenda. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, and tell, please tell Scott how much that message meant to me and just how it's, uh, it's brought forth even this word today. Father in heaven, 
We seal this now. And Lord, as we pray in these notes, it's at the end of our notes. Lord, I commit to this for the next seven days. And with your help and strength, we'll draw closer to you. Lord, it's a simple prayer, but it's an honest prayer and it's a real prayer. Why is it real? Because we've put real tangible movement into it. Holy Spirit, you've spoken. And we will, with your strength, be successful in drawing closer to you. God, thank you for being such a good father. You made the first move and the second move is always ours. And then when we move, then you move again. And then we move again. And this is how we mature, we grow, we get to the destiny you've created for us. One step from glory to glory, one mountain, one victory at a time, one one uh, one decision at a time. Lord, I pray that myself and everyone can make great decisions, not just good decisions, great decisions today with our time, with our schedule, with our behavior, with our words. God, you're so great. Thank you. Thank you that we live in resurrection power. Every day is Easter because Jesus lives. Every day is Easter because Jesus lives. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 I love you guys so much. God bless you. We'll see you soon next Tuesday. Bye-bye. Share this video, please. I'd love if you share it. This is truth that will help change somebody's life. Amen. Amen.